fun. Hi, good morning everyone. Um, welcome to another another edition of Stray Talk. Um, we have here John Janusha, who's, who's I've been trying to uh, to be a guest here since I mean since I think since May. Since May, yes. And yes, yes. also joining us is Bjorn uh, Pardo, the product manager of UBX uh, Union Bank UBX, and of course, Tina, our uh, uh, editor. So um, welcome, welcome to the uh, welcome to. Uh, So um uh, John uh, tell us about uh, tell us about UBX and what's what is what are its role in in Union Bank's digital transformation. Yeah, sure, sure. That's a that's a great uh, great way to start. Um so very I mean the quick answer is UBX is a wholly owned uh, subsidiary of uh, Union Bank and it's a fintech. It's mm -hmm. a it's a startup and it's a fintech company. Um, but I, I think the more uh, descriptive uh, answer is that UBX is actually part of Union Bank's uh, what we call our dual transformation mm -hmm. strategy. Um, I think uh, I think Edwin, the uh, CEO of Union Bank, was here a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, I, he would have uh, described how the the core bank, Union Bank. Mm -hmm. Uh, is digitally transforming mm -hmm. itself. So it continues to provide banking services, um, but it's changing how those services are provided. Um, and it's uh, essentially digitizing itself uh, to the core. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, at the same time, we feel that the bank of the future may not be a place you go to. Mm -hmm. uh, financial services will be embedded uh, into the activities and the experiences that matter to to people or, or to businesses as they go about uh, their day-to-day -day, uh, activities. Um, so in that regard, in that regard, we feel that we have to become a technology mm -hmm. company uh, and we have to build platforms within which we can embed these financial services. Mm -hmm. In a way, make banking invisible. Yeah. And so that's what UBX is. UBX, mm -hmm. uh, UBX is a technology company. Uh, we're creating and we're investing in digital platforms, and, and our goal is to leverage those platforms to to embed financial services to essentially make banking invisible. Yeah, you, you mentioned big words like uh, embedded banking, invisible banking, and um, the, the the banking of the future will not be a place to go to. And how, how explain that? Yeah, yeah, sure. How about I maybe I can just give you a real mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. and uh, this will make mm -hmm. it uh, absolutely concrete. Um, uh, hopefully later on we'll get a chance to talk about what we're doing for the micro, small and medium mm -hmm. enterprises, but I'll, I'll, I'll leverage that that uh, that ecosystem um, to, to give you a real concrete example. Um, so we've been, I guess for the past number of months, uh, we've been uh, running a system and we've created a platform mm -hmm. and what we do is we embed this, uh, it's a lending platform mm -hmm but it's embedded into the point of sale and the ordering system of the FMCG mm -hmm. uh, distributors. So the, the fast moving consumer goods, mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, think of uh, like Procter and Gamble, Unilever, these types of guys, mm -hmm. uh, their distributors uh, go to the sorry, sorry stores, uh, mm -hmm. you know, every week, every couple of weeks. <clears throat> uh, what would happen in the past is if the distributor made it to the sorry, sorry store, uh, but another distributor was there earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, the Sari Sari store may be out of cash. Mm -hmm. And that's traditionally how these transactions were settled. Um, and if they're out of cash, unfortunately, even though they know they can sell mm -hmm. the goods and, and actually uplift their business, uh, they, they don't have the means to, to actually acquire those goods. And so what happens uh, uh, essentially is the, the distributor will be back in, in a week or two. Um, and what happens is the sorry, sorry store owner, they know they can sell this mm -hmm. stuff. So when they do have money, so as they sell mm -hmm. other things and they acquire cash, you know, they'll, they'll get someone to watch the store. They might shut the store down. Uh, they'll, they'll take some transport over to the, to the local pure gold. Mm -hmm. They'll, they'll pay retail. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll bring the stuff back to their sorry, sorry store and, and they will sell it. Um, so what we did is we created this uh, this platform, this lending platform, and so when the distributor comes, 
instead of all of what I just described mm -hmm. happening, the sorry sorry store can uh, apply for credit mm -hmm. on the spot, mm -hmm. and it's a one hundred percent digital straight through process. Uh, the funds are extended; they can use it on the spot to acquire the goods from the distributor while they're there, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and it's a win 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 because the distributor sells more goods. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's good for us because we've extended credit to uh, a market that in the past might have been a little bit difficult for us to reach. Um, but most importantly, in this case, it's a win for the micro entrepreneur because they are getting access to credit um, at a much uh, cheaper rate. And more importantly, it's just embedded into mm -hmm. the ordering process. So it just happens naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Bjorn, can you uh, further explain all this? Um the uh, when the sorry sorry store um, needs some loans mm -hmm. and, and using your platform who will be providing that loan and what how much the the interest rate and how much is the maximum they can they can uh, they can loan and um how how do they get that yeah well right that, now that, how do they avail of that uh, credit facility yeah right now like john was saying it's it's really embedded into the pos system mm -hmm. at their store right mm -hmm. And right now, um, we are the ones. Union Bank, uh, UBX is is are the, uh, is is the entity that is underwriting the loans right now. But we want to expand that out into more of an ecosystem or more of a platform mm -hmm. where um, other lenders can now participate in in this, mm -hmm. right? Um, and in terms of the amount, I mean, it, it's really what they need at that moment in time, mm -hmm. right? And it's it it doesn't have to be. There's no fixed amounts. Yeah. If they need you know, X amount of pesos for today's, um, mm -hmm. you know, inventory, that's that's what they'll be applying for. So say I'm sorry, sir, sir, owner, and here comes a distributor selling me, say, 10,000 pesos worth of goods that I need in my in my store to for my inventory, but I don't have any money. And under your platform, I can I can easily get... That's, that's exactly it. So mm -hmm. you can apply for that on the spot. Mm -hmm. um, Who will approve the... Uh, the loan application. So the loan is approved automatically based mm -hmm. on the scoring rules mm -hmm. uh, of the platform. So mm -hmm. if, so for the for the sorry sorry store owner in this case, mm -hmm. it's a straight through process. They they apply and it's either uh, granted or, or not. But in most cases, it's granted mm -hmm. um, on the spot. And and it's and and what happens is over time. And this is the other mm -hmm. this is the other side of it. Over time. Uh, our ability to score and extend mm -hmm. more credit becomes uh, better and better because the 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 models that are baked into this platform mm -hmm. they learn, right? So we're building some AI into the platform so that over time, uh, you know, we see the we see the order history of the sorry sorry stores. We understand how they're moving goods, and it becomes uh, a lot easier for the platform to. Uh, to underwrite those loans and and frankly to where appropriate um, allow uh, greater amounts to be dispersed mm -hmm. yeah is this um, loan facility for SMEs is this the one you partnered with Bing and, and one connect that's correct that's mm -hmm. correct I mean we are you know this is this is the the first step of that partnership I mean right now we are working together to co-create um, different business models mm -hmm. for this is this already available? So this one's available. We're we're piloting this, and and, uh, and by pilot I mean it's commercial. It's mm -hmm. in the market. Um, but what we've been doing uh, is we've been partnering with uh, cash agents and uh, distributors mm -hmm. on a. You know, we did a couple to start, mm -hmm. and now we're onboarding more and more. And then, as Bjorn said, as we as we build out the rest of this SME lending platform. Um, we will start to go after even more channels. In this case, it's kind of like the distributor is a mm -hmm. channel. Um, but what we'd like to do, as Bjorn alluded to, is is go after more channels. Uh, which areas are, are these available? Pardon me. Which areas in the in the country are these available? Um, we started in uh, we started with uh, some of the routes uh, for some of the distributors for some of the FMCGs. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, we started specifically in uh, some roots in Cebu and some roots in Marikina Valley. But that is uh, that's expanding uh, quite quickly now. So uh, we hope to get uh, 
some very very decent uh, coverage and and it's imminent it's uh, so that's now what what's happened is uh, you know the obviously we've gotten great feedback from the sorry sorry store mm -hmm. uh, owners uh, who have availed of this facility um, so that that was good um, but also uh, the distributors and the FMCGs that are backing them are also realizing that this is uh, this is a, a net benefit and a, and a positive. It's creating a positive and material impact on their business. So now they're eager mm -hmm. to to partner with us and to expand uh, the number of uh, the number of routes and the number of distributors that are offering this facility. How about interest rates? Interest rates. Um, I can tell you that they are competitive, right? I mean, at the same time, we want to be able to give, um, you know, individuals and businesses access to credit mm -hmm. um, in an affordable way. Well, you know, traditionally, uh, these SARS or these, uh, these SMEs, um, they, they secure loans uh, from from loan sharks, mm -hmm. uh, those in Mumbai, charging up to 20% interest. And how much is uh, your, your, your pla this platform, yeah. um, comparatively, how, how competitive is this compared to yeah. this, the 20% being offered by very traditional uh, um, uh, lo loan sharks? Yeah. Let, let's <clears throat> just say that it's extremely, it's nothing like that. It's mm -hmm. much, much more competitive. It's very reasonable. And and the, the the store owners these are very smart, uh, intelligent. These are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they know very quickly uh, whether this is a a good deal or not. Um, and uh, because of the uh, the take up rate, I think uh, I think it just speaks for itself. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, it is extremely extremely part, uh, sorry extremely competitive. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess the only thing is uh, you know it will vary somewhat by you know by by individual mm -hmm. by distributor um, etc but it's 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 very reasonable very reasonable and everything's fully transparent i mean everything from from the kind of weekly or, or bi-monthly payments everything is, is shown up front so they they know what what you know what what they're paying for so how do you intend to build awareness around this kind of product? Of course, um, you've already started with uh, Marikina, specific areas of Cebu. Um, how do you intend that people would be more um, aware and interested to avail of it? How do you? How will you be able to market it? I mean, right. Well, I'll, I'll start with the current um, channel through the distributors, but then I'll I'll, I'll hand it over to Bjorn because um, obviously we want to explore many many more more channels and, and Bjorn and the team are working on that. But with the distributors, the, the number one marketer is the distributor oh, themselves, right? They they show up to the store and mm -hmm. if the store owner doesn't have the, the cash or the means at the time, um, it's a perfect opportunity for them to, to still transact. Um, so in a way, they kind of do the marketing for us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Everything's really in fully embedded into their POS system. So uh essentially there's really no need for us to to, to really kind of market this oh, okay that's good um, how do you see the market readiness i mean um, um all of these smes and other um, individuals that you'd like to uh, buy into this particular service um how do you see that the market is ready well i i think i'll speak to the need um i'll speak to the need and then and then maybe bjorn can share uh from some of his past experience on on the the readiness, um, but uh, SMEs uh, they make up ninety nine point six six percent of all businesses in the yeah. Philippines. Mm -hmm. um, as as far as I understand it, it represents over sixty percent of the GDP. Mm -hmm. um, yet, well under ten percent, uh, as far as I understand, of of loans uh, extended by commercial banks. Um, go to to SMEs. So there's a, I mean, clearly the numbers speak for themselves. Mm. There's a clear need uh, for credit for such an important uh, segment of our economy. Yes. Yeah. Bjorn, I don't know if you yeah. had any, yeah, if you wanted to kind of add to that, maybe, yeah. you know, on the ground, yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, in terms of market readiness, I think everyone's ready, right? I mean, everyone... Uh, you know, like what John was saying, I think what less than ten percent of of MSMEs have access to to credit, and um, 
that goes for not just MSMEs, but also consumers, right? And, and just to kind of give you, I guess, maybe another example outside of the offline retail ecosystem is, is we're, we're getting into all these different ecosystems. And one ecosystem that we're, we're, we're exploring right now is the online commerce ecosystem. Oh. And, um, you know, I think by, uh, I think everyone knows that, I think Filipinos are naturally entrepreneurial. Everyone wants to, you know, make their own money and have control over their finances and, 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 and everyone's exploring different opportunities. And online commerce, e-commerce is, is one of the perfect ways to do that. And on the consumer side, on the buyer side, Right. Um, you're seeing a lot of uh, push from all different companies to, to go digital, right? Digital, digital payments, you know, kind of going from cash to digital. But there's it, it, it's there's there's you have to kind of, um, you know, you're seeing now that cash on delivery is, is very is very popular and that yeah. kind of broadened the market. Right. And we see um, consumer credit as kind of this next phase of of you know broadening the market broadening the market giving people access to this whole new ecosystem of online commerce so that's kind of one example of an ecosystem that we're we're trying to kind of enter mm -hmm. um, where credit can play a big role in yeah you mentioned that the uh, statistically 99.6 percent of the philippine industry are smes mm -hmm. and only 10 percent of them gets access to financial institutions but the the, the biggest problem there is they can, these these smes cannot access financial institutions because they don't have any bank accounts yeah and they don't have any banking records now how will this this platform of yours um <clears throat> uh, give access to 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 the SMEs, to, to uh, financial facilities, and how will that change the land, landscape of SMEs? Yeah, well, just to maybe give you an example on the kind of online commerce side, because mm -hmm. that's 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 something that's a big space that we're focusing on right mm -hmm. now. And if you um, look at what what value a bank account gives, it's 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 <coughs> it's a place to store value. It's a place to, um, you know transfer funds or transfer money and access to credit and in the online commerce space if we give people the ability to easily accept payments and easily um you know accept payments wherever they are mm -hmm. you know and something similar to what the bank is doing is embedded banking we're trying to also do the same in embedded commerce so wherever you are whether that's on facebook whether that's on social media we're trying to give you the ability to uh, participate in, in online commerce um, from wherever you are. And once we're able to do that, uh, you have access to, to, to any service that a bank can do. And that's you know, a place to store value, a place to transfer money, and, and access to credit. So they will, get, they, will, uh, they will get their or create their digital food, food, uh, food footprints right. yeah exactly and, and i think what happened in the past too is the reason the bank account may have been so important is because you could actually see the bank could actually see transactions within the account mm -hmm. um, obviously as we go to these digital platforms we're looking at different types of transactions so for example i'll bring up the sorry sorry store mm -hmm. again we're looking at effectively their 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 movement of goods we're looking at their ordering history mm -hmm. And there's no reason why we can't use that transactional data to extend credit, right? It's so that data, it's, it's yeah, it's easier, data exactly, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, yeah, because right now the main challenge is that for you to apply for a bank account or even a credit line is that you have to have that particular. Um, you should be able to show that you are capable of being able to pay off your mm -hmm. loans, pay off your debts, Correct. et cetera. Yeah. In this um, way. Um, I think it would really enable a lot of SMEs to um, be able to get these transactions and also be able to roll um, whatever income they have Correct. Through, correct. through your service. Exactly. I mean, a, a, a store's sales history and ordering history are, are, are you know, in, in our minds, clear indication of capability. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. yeah. And, but I think the, one, of, one of the key factors there is convenience. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, people or, or these SMEs resort to to these loan sharks because it's very convenient for, for them to to secure credit and say I need fifty thousand pesos today, and there's a loan shark um, uh, avail- uh, available. If I can easily secure fifty thousand pesos loan uncollateralized. Now, uh, how convenient is is this uh, is this platform? Yeah, I mean, we're trying to embed ourselves wherever they are, right? Mm-hmm. If they're on, if they're on their cell phones, mm-hmm. we're going to be able to give people access to apply and access credit mm-hmm. through their phone, mm-hmm. right? And that's 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 way more convenient than waiting for someone to come to you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So, so, for example, one thing that we've noticed is that uh, s- micro and small businesses that are selling stuff online. Um, you know, a lot of them are actually marketing and advertising through Facebook, Instagram, and then they're effectively fulfilling those orders through text message mm-hmm. or Facebook messenger. Um, so as, as Bjorn said, um, you know, the way to eliminate the friction mm-hmm. is to show up where the, in this case, are our customers or hopefully our customers where they show up. We have to show up where they show up. And of course, uh, the, the most important thing there is the approval. Um, the approval uh, rating is almost hundred percent. Oh yeah, I mean that's that's the goal, mm-hmm. right? Um, that's why we're working with multiple um, third parties to be mm-hmm. able to increase the, the approval um, rate. Right? Okay. Yeah. So how stable is um, your your system? I mean. Um, Filipinos have this tendency to um, really want to see where their money is going. Um, that's also the reason why some are a bit hesitant yep. to use um, um, these convenience platforms like paying through online right, apps. Right. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's, a great, it's a great question. And this is where um, as much as UBX is a fintech company, um, this is where our affinity um, and 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 right now, uh, 100% ownership by Union Bank, I think, is important because uh, one thing that uh, that banks have uh, is uh, is uh, trust or an element of trust. And I think I think people knowing that uh, that our platform is is at the end of the day um, run by a company that is owned by a bank, I think, will provide uh, uh, a degree of uh, reassurance and confidence. Yeah. A follow-up question from Trina, uh, from Tina, uh, Trina. Uh, because he, uh, how how do you change the mindset of the Filipinos to to use digital transactions? Because here, money is still king. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think that's why we're trying to take a phased approach, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we're not mm-hmm. telling people, okay, um, you know, you're paying cash now. We mm-hmm. want you to go full digital mm-hmm. immediately. So we're again, you know, like for example. Um, cash on delivery for online commerce is is very popular. Mm. So one thing that we're going to be trying to do is we're going to try to maybe help digitize cash on delivery mm. to kind of get to the point where we can go full digital, right? We're not trying to kind of go from one to ten immediately. We're taking one, two, three, mm. four un- until we get to ten. Okay, that's great. So what other initiatives uh, is UBX doing aside from uh, from these? Uh, uh, SME loans. SME. SME. Yeah, sure. Well, one of the uh, let me let me start. Yeah, one of the one of the big uh, platforms that we've uh, been working on uh, is uh, our eye to eye platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, the eye to eye platform. Let, let, let me tell the story a certain way because I, I think it's an interesting way to 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 share it. Um, we've often talked about financial inclusion um, and the 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 smaller banks the rural banks the thrift banks the co-ops um, I think traditionally they've been seen as uh, as a lever to 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 uh, increase uh, inclusion because they're they are they're out there they're in the community mm-hmm. um, but one thing that we noticed we noticed that the a lot of the rural banks uh, co-ops and other non-banking financial institutions were themselves mm-hmm. excluded. Mm-hmm. Uh, most rural banks, for example, are not part of the uh, national uh, uh, networks and pay- financial uh, networks and payment systems. Um, and uh, so we we thought we thought we would tackle this problem kind of the other way around. What the traditional approach was to uh, you know work on core infrastructure of these institutions, 
you know, help them tech up um, and, and maybe that would allow them to kind of play digitally. So we figured, no, no, let's 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 try it the other way around. Let's include the institutions first. Let's get them all connected. Let's start with that. Mm -hmm. um, and as they get a taste of participating in, in, in a national network and the national payment systems, um, that creates the uh, motivation to, to kind of tech up the rest of the organization. And so eye to eye actually started as exactly that. It was, it's a network, it's a blockchain based mm -hmm. network. Um, and it's effectively a clearing system um, for rural banks, uh, co-ops, and, and NBFIs. Um, it's uh, because it's on the blockchain. Uh, it's distributed. Um, it's uh, it's economical. It's real time. Um, and so on on eye to eye, uh, member institutions can, for example, transfer funds from one institution to the other. They can do that in in real time. But then we we took it one step further and we leveraged our our relationship with Union Bank to connect eye to eye to the national retail payment system. And so what's possible today uh, is uh, people at uh, a rural bank um, in, in um, you know, the remotest areas of the country uh, can transfer money from that rural bank to another rural bank, but they can also transfer money from that rural bank to, to any commercial bank in the country, right? So I can walk into a, a rural bank um, in, in Mindanao who's on our platform and I can transfer money to an account, to a union bank account or a BDO account or a China bank account in, uh, in Manila or anywhere in the country. Yeah. So that, that's how we started that, that network. Now what we're, now what we're doing, now that we're, we're connecting those, those guys, we are, we are adding more technology to that platform so that, and our goal there is to literally provide a turnkey solution for for these institutions so it's uh we call it a digital transformation package so they'll get connected uh, but they'll also get the technology uh to for example be able to card their um their uh account holders to provide mobile banking this sort of thing yeah so that, that's a major idi is a major platform for us so will this will I, the uh i to i platform allow a remote rural bank accept remittance say from from a foreign country from or offshore yeah so I, i'm glad you, i'm glad you asked that question um we it was just a a short while ago that we uh, tested mm -hmm. uh um, we tested an, an actual real live transaction mm -hmm. where we moved money from an account uh, at ocbc bank in singapore mm -hmm. in real time mm -hmm. to an account in uh, Cantilan Bank, which is in uh, in Mindanao, and we did that. Uh, we we tested that transaction, a real transaction, moving real money, uh, and we did that a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Now that we know that that works, mm -hmm. uh, we are now working on, uh, you know, productizing that so that it can be baked into the platform, um, and it can be made available to to everybody. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, is this is it a lot? Is this safe or? Will it even be cheaper than traditional uh, way of sending money from from abroad? Right, right. So we're we're leveraging to make this happen. We're leveraging the 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 the, the blockchain technology that underlies the eye to eye mm -hmm. platform. Um, so in that regard, it's a hundred percent digital, right? Mm -hmm. So the uh, the cost of the incremental cost of facilitating these transactions is very small. So this this should prove to be quite economical mm -hmm. compared to other other means of uh in this case international funds transfer yeah, yeah. Uh, you mentioned that uh, um, this cross-border uh, remittance transaction using blockchain but you um you are leveraging that you're leveraging that using your phx stable coin uh, can you um explain that further yeah yeah sure so um there there uh to make our platform work we are moving a store of value um on on the uh on on this grid let's call i to i a grid that's backed by blockchain we're moving a store of value um and that store of value has to be completely digital and we have done that uh, by creating a stable coin mm -hmm. and a stable coin is what that means is it's cryptocurrency 
um, but it's tied to fiat currency. So our stable coin, which we call PHX, mm -hmm. is tied to the Philippine peso. Okay, and um, so the, the, there's two benefits there. Uh, one benefit is that it's natively digital, mm -hmm. so it allows us to to enable the cross border transfer mm -hmm. and the transfer amongst uh, in the domestic market for people on the platform. Um, but then the other thing is it's the it's the um, the pegging to the Philippine peso that's important. So while we have a natively digital currency, because it's pegged to the Philippine peso, uh, it's not volatile like other cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I think it's well known out there that, you know, everyone's excited about Bitcoin and whatnot, but it's very volatile. One day the price is way up here and then it goes down and then it's up again. Um, because this is pegged to the Philippine peso, you get all the benefits of a digital currency, um, but you also get the reassurance of, uh, you know, of the stability of the Philippine uh, peso and all the, the guarantees uh, that typically go along with that. Yeah. So we, if it's back to the Philippine peso, is it safe? Is it safe to, to use? Yeah, well, it's, it's very safe because uh, what's happening in a way uh, behind the scenes, uh, obviously there's a lot of technology going on, but essentially when a stable coin is issued, it's because there is, in this case, mm -hmm. a Philippine peso, mm -hmm. you know, in our vault. Mm -hmm. So every stable coin is backed by, every stable peso is backed by a fiat peso, uh, in this case, held in the bank. Yeah. So uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, an idiot like me, can you uh, explain the differences between the crypto coin, token, stable coin, uh, security token? So say that again. So uh, can you can you can you um, explain the differences? What is uh, between uh, a stable coin, a token, a, a cryptocurrency coin, and a security token? So what 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 are the differences? Well, I'll 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 I'll, 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 I'll start. I'll start. Uh, I'll, I'll give it my best go here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So a stable coin is it's cryptocurrency, but it's pegged to a fiat currency. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, we're we're using the Philippine peso. There are others that are pegging their stable coins, for example, to a U.S. dollar, mm -hmm. um, and, and there'll be others. Mm -hmm. um, in a way, we've all heard about Libra. The, mm -hmm. In a way, that it's not pegged, as a, far as I understand it, it's not pegged to a single fiat currency, mm -hmm. but a basket of currencies. But in a way, it's the same kind of concept. Mm -hmm. um, Non-pegged, uh, you know, I don't even know if this is a real term, a non-stable cryptocurrency, but mm -hmm. things like uh, a, a Bitcoin and uh, and Ether on Ethereum, um, yeah, they're just they're not they're not pegged like that. So it's pure it's pure market uh, mm -hmm. demand. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, a float or a pool of of Bitcoins that are out there, and uh, as as many people know, there is the ability uh, to mine more, um, but the the value goes with the supply and demand i guess uh of the of the market essentially there's a market there um uh, tokens are where an asset um so by the way in both cases they're both tokens mm -hmm. in fact the paper currency we have is actually a token it's just a mm -hmm. physical token right yeah. mm -hmm. um so in general a token is uh it, it represents um, a claim to a to an asset or a fraction of an asset uh, of an asset. Yeah, yeah. So, Bjorn, um, aside from these SMEs and and these IDI, what other projects uh, does UBS is is busy right now? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I think you can break down SMEs into many different segments, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, an SME is anyone from an individual mm -hmm. that is you know, a sorry, sorry store mm -hmm. or an online seller selling on social media all the way up to medium sized businesses with perhaps hundreds of employees. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you if you break that down, there's actually many different groups of, of businesses that we can we can target with specific solutions. And that's what we're doing now. Right. So, um, you know, we're not trying to go with a one size fits all solution for the entire segment. We're trying to go after specific segments with with similarities mm -hmm. and solving their immediate pain points and growing from there right
Mm-hmm. Is that does that make sense? Yeah, and how about how about industries? What other industries are you uh, uh, are looking at? Yeah, so one one again one one really kind of big industry that we're going after is is e-commerce, mm-hmm. right? Um, that that's kind of one industry that we're going after. Another industry that we're possibly going to be targeting very soon is the offline based services industry. So think of companies like um, you know uh, barbershops, salons. Um, stuff uh, you know, companies like this, where again, th- there's a lot of, th- they're they're definitely underserved, mm-hmm. um, and they have they're very different from a uh, sorry 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 mm-hmm. they're very different from <clears throat> an online based business, um, but it's a huge segment that we want to be able to to help them. Okay, going back to PHX, um, is it commercially available now? So. Is it that, like can I can I use that now? Yeah. So the way it's being used today, and the way we're rolling it out, is we are embedding the stablecoin into mm-hmm. these platforms. So as a as a user, you mm-hmm. don't really see it directly. Mm-hmm. It's being used to, uh, in the cases that I've mm-hmm. described so far, it's being used to facilitate uh, movement of of funds between rural banks and and co-ops and NBFIs mm-hmm. in the Philippines. We've used it to to test how we will move uh, funds from a foreign country into the Philippines. Um, so in that regard, you know, if you're if you're on the eye to eye platform in that case, mm-hmm. um, you'll actually be using stable coins without maybe even realizing mm-hmm. that okay. you are. Mm-hmm. Um, we will have to see, uh, you know, obviously we've created this common uh, store of, uh, of digital value. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very uh, useful. There will be multiple uses for it, um, but in order for you to 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 explicitly uh, buy and sell uh, the stablecoin, um, we would uh, you know we would you know one thing we might have to do is have it listed on a on a virtual mm-hmm. currency exchange. That that sort of thing. Although it it could be you know a stablecoin. It's almost like a bit of infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing stopping other partners from leveraging this mm-hmm. uh, to uh, to fa- facilitate other applications, mm-hmm. and, and so you might end up you might end up interacting with uh, the PHX uh, our stablecoin uh, through other channels like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, there there could be more use cases for PHX in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think we're just scratching the surface. Mm-hmm. Not just remittances. Absolutely, absolutely. It's it's uh, remittances are kind of an obvious application. Mm-hmm. Um, and it fits into our our strategy of teching up the financial institutions in the Philippines. But yeah, absolutely, we're just scratching the surface. So and, later on, I can yeah. buy this bottle of water using PHX. Oh, right. No. right. So it, it, it's not. Sorry, I was just going to say it's not hard to imagine. For example, so this is, you know, I'm not suggesting that we are 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 going to do this, uh, you know, immediately or or in the near term. But it's not hard to imagine. Um, that uh, the stablecoin that is powering the wallets on our eye to eye platform might not be powering the wallet uh, inside of a point of sale mm-hmm. in a retail store, and in that way, I could be using stablecoin as an exchange of value. As an exchange of value, mm-hmm. absolutely, and in, in this case, in a retail setting, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, what do you think is your uh, best horizon? Like, how how soon do you see this um, um, coming to life? Right. mass adoption yeah mass adoption yeah well I, I think immediately we will continue to leverage the the uh, stable coin within the platforms that we're building so in a way that will expose it to to many many people but it won't be uh, you know it, it'll be embedded in the platform uh, so it, it will it will facilitate the platform and the value um, that in this case eye to eye or our SME, lending platforms or some of the other SME tools that we're working on. Um, so it'll power that, but I, I don't know that immediately it will be, um, you know, uh, an experience where you're you're touching and feeling stable coins. It's, it's kind of baked in there and it helps us uh, push these platforms forward. But that, I think that's where we see it near term. That does not, definitely does not exclude the possibility of in the future, you know, listing a stable coin on an exchange or it becoming a, a, a currency that you actually explicitly buy or sell, you know, yeah. But do you have plans to uh, to list 
PHX in a uh, in a crypto exchange. Yeah. So not not at this time. Yeah. Not at this time. Maybe we were, of course. Uh, you know, it's an obvious kind of use case. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so for now, no, but it's definitely something that we are yeah, yeah. keeping our, our eye on and it, it might be something that we, um, you know, it might be something that in the near term we, we decide to pursue. But at this point, we're just focusing on the platforms mm -hmm. that we're building and leveraging it there. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the bigger ecosystems where PHX will be available on is, is online payments, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's kind of to your point where you would be able to buy certain goods online using PHA without you necessarily knowing that you're using it. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, embedded banking in it again. Again. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, do you have a follow-up question? No. Oh, uh, going to, to uh, no, uh, going to uh, a different topic. Um, there's a, there have been uh, ongoing talks that the Commission on Election is, is, is planning on using blockchain um, in the uh, conduct of elections. Now, UBX being one of the, uh, the pioneers in blockchain technologies, how will you do it if, if, if you will participate in that project? Yeah, I mean, I, I, so I, I'd like to generalize the question. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you talked about, uh, you know, elections and, and, and I suppose there's other applications in government and there's applications even beyond government. Um, but I think, um, you know, regardless of the application, regardless mm -hmm. of the specific application, UBX has developed, uh, in order to develop the platforms that mm -hmm. we've talked about mm -hmm. so far, we've we've developed uh, quite a, a, a significant capability mm -hmm. in developing on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, so in that regard, um, I think that UBX is very well poised to be, for example, a technology service provider uh, to other uh, enterprises, uh, you know, government or non-government or private industry, um, you know, I think we're well positioned to be a, 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 a an expert or a technology service provider yeah. to those uh, organizations as they pursue applications like what you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And will it be will it be a uh, more uh, secure if we do elections? At using the on the blockchain uh, blockchain platform. Yeah, so I I I I don't think I I don't think I'd want to uh, necessarily <laughs> answer that question. Right, I I don't know if I'm the expert there. Obviously, you know there are there are uh, applications for things like voting, for things like auctions. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many applications of the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So let me put it this way: Is it a potential use case? I suppose it is, but I'm 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 not an expert on, on on how well suited at this time that technology is for that specific application. Yeah, can can you explain to us what the blockchain is, so that we will get an idea if if it, if conducting election is a good use case for, <laughs> for the platform. Yeah, yeah. So well, a blockchain is is effectively a distributed ledger. Mm -hmm. um, what what happened in the past when we kept track of transactions is there would typically be a central uh, body or a central authority that kept the books. Uh, the blockchain is basically uh, a ledger that's replicated across what they call nodes, but mm -hmm. you can think of it as many people all at once having copies of the books. Oh. Um, and, and what makes it work is this distributed, this distributed nature. Because if I try to fudge the books, I have to fudge every copy mm -hmm. uh, that's out there. And of course, there are mechanisms uh, on the blockchain uh, that make that uh, essentially impossible, right? And so that's what, uh, that's what makes the, the blockchain uh, both uh, what they say, they call it immutable, so yeah. it can't be changed and uh, by extension secure, yeah. Mm -hmm. So is there any uh, 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 party words? Uh, what do, do you have anything uh, to say uh, about uh, UBEX before we uh, go. Yeah, well, you know, um, I think that, uh, again, we're, we are trying to include everyone, whether that's individuals, whether that's banks that are, are naturally uh, excluded from the um, broader, um, you know, traditional banking infrastructure. Um, and, you know, just, just keep an eye out for, for the different products that we have. It's, it's ubx.ph and, and we're doing a lot of interesting things in many different ecosystems. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that. I think Bjorn said it well. Um, to be maybe even a little bit more explicit um, for uh, for rural banks, co-ops, uh, agents, and others in the in the the financial services sector, um, we're we're definitely very welcoming of of those institutions mm -hmm. joining the eye to eye platform. Um, we are we are also very eager for uh, SMEs and and for for lenders to to join us as we uh, expand and roll out our SME lending platform. Uh, Bjorn's team is is uh, uh, on the verge of releasing uh, the first version of our uh, e-commerce mm -hmm. uh, payment solution. Um, so that 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 release is is imminent. So obviously we look forward to to SMEs who are in this case involved in online e-commerce um, participating. Um, but I think those those are concrete, mm -hmm. uh, very concrete things. But if we roll it back up to to what Bjorn was closing on there, uh, you know, ultimately our goal is is to include everyone. And we truly believe that by creating digital platforms mm -hmm. and embedding financial services into those platforms, uh, we create a very efficient way to transact. We create very efficient marketplaces, whether it's for business or to secure credit uh, or other financial services. And because of that, we truly believe that we will bring greater opportunity and, and greater access to, to everyone. Yeah, uh, one last thing. Uh, this e-commerce e payment platform, is this a new product? It is a new product, it is yet to be released, but it is something that will be released very soon. Uh, when, when? And can you explain that? Um, <laughs> okay, sure. Um, well, again, I think it's really all about embedding ourselves wherever these uh, online sellers are, mm. right? And what we're seeing is that online sellers, a lot of online sellers, are, are conducting you know, business and, 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 and completing transactions through social media, mm -hmm. particularly Facebook, right? And if you look at the typical transaction, you're seeing people who are communicating mm -hmm. through, through Facebook, social media, and then going outside of that platform mm -hmm. to complete a payment or, yeah. or, 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 pay, or, or pay my GCash, pay, pay my GCash whatever. whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. um, and also even to take it a step further, mm -hmm. also, you know, once you sell something, you have to ship that thing, mm -hmm. right? So then you have to go to another different platform mm -hmm. to do all those to do all those things. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to keep everything into one platform mm -hmm. and and allow them to complete the transaction all within wherever they are, whether that's on mm -hmm. uh, through through a chat um, you know uh, chat application mm -hmm. or or whatever it may be. So can, so can you tell, can you share the name of this? Oh, yeah, yeah, the name, uh, is, the name, the, the, the name is, is Bux, so that's B-U-X. Mm -hmm. uh, Bux is, is a, a uh, you know, terminology that is, which means money or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or funds or whatever. Um, and you can kind of see the, the different letters of, of, the, of, the, of Bux is actually the same as U-B-X. So it's just kind of switching oh, out yeah. the U and the B. <laughs> So, so that's very, that, so you, that's will integrate, you will integrate box into the social media platforms where online selling is happening. Correct. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And and wherever else, right? Mm -hmm. And whether that's POS systems, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. we want to embed ourselves everywhere, wherever our yeah, customers. Are. Right. And then in turn, we embed the lending platform mm -hmm. that we have into this. Into this. So you can kind of see how everything comes together. And, and same thing with PHX, and you know everything's kind of. We're creating this 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 ecosystem. This ecosystem yeah. What's the name of the uh, uh, the uh, lending system? Well, I think we're I think we're still working on on a name and and how we brand it. But uh, but I think the way that it will show up for most people is it will be again it's a platform it's a it's a platform it's it's an engine if you will and it will be embedded into. So for e-commerce, it will be embedded into Box mm -hmm. um, for the. Um, we already talked about the FMCG distributor, mm -hmm. so it'll be embedded there. So probably it will probably show up under a number of different brands and channels. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Anyway, uh, thank you very much.
John. Thank you. And, thank you, uh, company. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you for being thank here. You. Thank, you. And, thank you. Thank you very much. To thank our you. fellow Filipinos, next time that you are looking for loans, don't look for for those. Uh, you know, motorcycle riding. <laughs> <laughs> Look for, wait for the UBX team to, to, go, to go to your place and then you can secure loans from them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank, thank you. you.